Good afternoon, everyone. Or is it good morning? I honestly don't know, my viewers, where you are. Thanks to this COVID times, we are going through this year's first virtual conference that I am attending, or I'm actually presenting for the, in this federal law's world. Thank you, CRU. Thank you, Dominic and your team for giving me this opportunity to speak about my company and speak about my favorite subject, stainless steel stuff. Is it as good as the old days pre-COVID or is it the new norm that we need to deal with? As we all know, things have dramatically changed in the world. Who knew in January, 2020 that the rest of the year one will not be able to travel. One will not be able to move around from one part of the world to the other. Who would have known? Who would have imagined that all the industries which were booming, the airlines, the automobiles, hospitality, food and beverages, restaurants, food processing, home appliances, production and sales, and retail of it, how? Construction, all of this would register a drop of more than 50 or maybe in the range of 50 to 75% in their revenues. Who would have guessed? I don't think even the famous Notre Dame would have predicted this. All, so my friends, we all know there is a bumpy ride ahead. We all need to fasten our seat belts and ensure that we land safe, healthy, and do not lose the little bit of wealth that we have accumulated in the past. Allow me to introduce my company, Nymet Metals Inc. It's a three decade old company established with links to business of nickel based products from primary nickel which is nickel cathodes, both for melting and plating industry, secondary nickel, such as ferro nickel, again for stainless steel industry, and tertiary nickel, which is basically the nickel in the stainless steel scrap. Nymeth has become a factor when it comes to stainless steel scrap. We operate a scrap processing facility outside of Milan in Northern Italy in the name of Uninox Metals Italia. Currently, we trade almost in excess of 10,000 metric tons of stainless steel scrap per month. Now it also trades in other metals, ferrous metals as well, scrap and primary metals. So having said that, Nymet has been in the business of bridging the gap between India and the Western world. We have, we have created a niche for ourselves to provide services to the Western world to supply their material into India. And at the same time, we have built up an expertise of supplying stainless steel scrap into India and other parts of the world. Uh, before I proceed further with my presentation, I would like to thank and acknowledge the contribution of the industry stalwarts, such as in, uh, International Nickel Study Group, SMR, CRU themselves, and International Stainless Steel Forum. These are the people from whom I have received a lot of contribution to build the data for this particular presentation and so that I can substantiate my claims. So thank you all. Thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Robert. Pump. Thank you, Ricardo. Thank you, CRU. Nikhil, particularly. And thank you, ISSF. Thanks a lot and appreciate your help. 
I would not go through on the agenda of ATAM. It is all a standard thing. You can go through that. And uh, we will go to the next slide, which is basically the global stainless steel scrap market. Friends, I have been in the scrap trade for over three and a half de decades, and more specifically in the stainless steel scrap business for the past 20 years. In my first decade of stainless steel scrap business, three or four, 17, eight scrap used to be typically 10% of the nickel value. So if the nickel LME was $10,000, then stainless steel scrap, 304 grade, the rule of thumb was valued at $1,000, which is basically 10% of the $10,000. This of course included the valuation of nickel at some discount on the LME, value for the chrome and valuation for the iron. All added up in simple mathematical terms, it was a 10% of the nickel value. Come to the second decade of my life in the stainless scrap business, I started seeing much more discounts to nickel. Market to market variable pricing for chrome. Like in India, the chrome prices are say $1,400 a ton. In Europe, for the same stainless scrap, the chrome values were closer to 1,800, maybe $1,900 a ton. But then the nickel valuation, India is to pay higher percentage and Europe was paying lower. One thing was definitely no common. When nickel went, prices went up, scrap, same as scrap prices went up. But all this changed in 2019. In the late 2019, I think it is September 2019, nickel prices rose to $18,000. And hey, what happened? Stainless steel scrap prices were lower than when nickel was close to fourteen or $15,000. Do we know why? As a matter of fact, I'm still trying to figure it out as to what happened, why? The prices floundered and suddenly too many people were offering too much of scrap and of course a buyer would take an advantage one day. Uh, Sorry. The global stainless steel market, as you can see from this very slide, is all about movement of scrap from one part of the world to the other. The foreign trade has grown between the continents and with values of scrap more than $1,000 a ton and logistics moving from brake bulk to container shipments, so much trade has increased globally during the past few years. And particularly with the advent of internet, a dramatic increase has further happened. Some countries you can notice have visible increase in trade and some countries have a visible decrease in the trade. But one thing is certain, globally, there is an increase of availability of scrap, as you will see. And supply and demand has grown. From 2010, from 7.7 7 million tons to 12 million tons, or to 13 million tons in 2020 forecasted. This is the kind of scrap availability that it has gone up. So globally, the business of scrap is definitely a big increase. As we know, COVID-19 struck us. In January, we had no clue what was gonna happen. Although it had already hit China, we were only thinking that this will never come out of China. Who knew? March and April, the reality had still not struck anyone how impactful this pandemic will remain and is going to remain. Again, what with wave two and wave three, swinging the big bat on our faces. Come March, 2020, and we started to see the closures and lockdown of economies, countries and companies. 
My own processing plant at Eden, Italy was shut down. All the material that was processed and unshipped was stuck as an inventory. All containers that had gone out of the plant, there was, there was a logistical nightmare. And you know what? On top of that, we could not get paid. Why? Because the documents were not moving. I remember some of my documents stuck in DHL facilities in Germany. There were some documents which were stuck in FedEx. And there were some stuck in the DHL and FedEx facilities in India to the, at the, outside the counters of the banks. And we, were, we could not get paid. It was a nightmare. But COVID-19 also taught us what more to do. We were firefighting consistently. In Canada too, lockdown was initiated and with all the logistical nightmare, one thing is that we all survived. So far we have survived and we will hopefully survive further. I'm gonna talk about post-COVID, basically post-COVID is not really post-COVID because the COVID is still not gone. It might still remain, but the world has to go on. Come early June to 2020, COVID-19 slightly easing down. The, my own plant in Italy, people were started wanting to come back to work. They did not even take their usual August holidays. Everybody wanted to work. And surprisingly, Indian males also came out first to buy. First, they asked us to ship all the on hold contracts. And then believe me, the first wave of buying was just unreal. I was questioning myself, can this be true? On the other hand, European and US meals in June, July, August were totally dead. They were not really buying any major quantities. So that one, that made you know, one more suspect more about the Indian buying. Frankly, I saw the demand for stainless scrap that I had not seen earlier. Gradually, prices came to reality. Customers started paying the right market values, whereas European and US mills, the demand was even lower. Perhaps that's why some experts say the market is in balance, seeing the lower demand met by lower supplies. While the industry closure meant no meant no processing, which really also meant no generation of scrap. A lot changed when the lockdown eased up. To conclude, while there was not a huge demand from European and US mills, the Indian mills had ramped up their consumption of stainless steel scrap. If I have the correct information and the right knowledge, India's scrap utilization ratios are getting closer and closer to 85% as against today, average of 77.10%, that is from the previous five years, from 2015 to 2019. But in 2020, I believe that percentage ratio is going to go higher up. China on the other front is at 22, 22.35%. U.S. is self-reliant with their own generation and has its own consumption at 77.49%. And perhaps there is a room for exports from the United States. Let's look at the global nickel production. <clears throat> nickel production has definitely on the increase until 2018-19. As you see, the forecast for 2020 is slightly lower than what was produced. But what makes more interesting is that while primary nickel production is forecasted to go a little lower, the MPI production, particularly in Indonesia, is ramping up to 578,000 metric tons. Total between China and Indonesia, the NPI production is going to be 1 million tons. That itself is a lot. If you see the figure of ferro-nickel, it is more or less constant. 
If you see the figure of 20, uh, primary nickel, it is more or less constant. The ramping up is all in NPI production. The demand for primary nickel will definitely go up because for the electric vehicle, because with that, the nickel in the batteries demand will go up. Again, combined with the speculative moves, we have seen nickel stocks falling globally to a, almost a seven year low. China, on the other hand, has had consistently a robust production of consuming nickel units out of NPI as against stainless steel scrap. Production is, China's production is a very reliable driver for nickel demand. But Chinese mills, scrap utilization ratio is just around 22%, which comes mainly from their domestic generation. Chinese mills are fully dependent on nickel pig iron so successfully as the Chinese mill, I'm sorry, Chinese mills are fully dependent on NPI as you can, from, you can see from this slide. No one has built the expertise of using NPI so successfully as the Chinese mill and now the Indonesians. Again, those mills are owned by the Chinese companies. One should note that you haven't seen any NPI getting consumed in the stainless steel industry in North America, neither in Europe. India has started using, some of the mills have started using NPI, the lower grade ones. I think what they're receiving is not the purest of the form that Shengshan Parats is using or the Chinese mills are using. However, they are still using it. Some Indian mills have also started buying high grade of NPI, which they are able to source out of Indonesia. But the real question is, can NPI substitute stainless steel scrap in India? I personally doubt it, or at least for the next five, 10 years, I doubt it. Who knows what will happen, but NPI needs to be imported as also in India, Scrap is a more important factor because NPI will be import. Scrap is also getting imported. But in the scrap, you get uh, discounted iron units, you get discounted chrome units, and you get discounted nickel units. In the nickel pig iron, you get only nickel and chrome. I mean, nickel and iron. So I personally don't think NPI will ever fully replace stainless steel scrap in India. Again, there is another factor which one has to consider how far it is true or false. The furnaces that are built are not built for NPI consumption. This is my personal belief and the NPI that they are using in India is perhaps they're using it as a blend along with stainless steel scrap to enhance the nickel valuation. My next slide. You know, I, my guesswork is that China's stainless steel scrap utilization ratio is gonna go up. If you look at this slide, approximately reclaimed scrap or industrial, you know, processed scrap, something that has been used in an industry. And when it comes back, if you see that it is gonna be taking approximately 15 to 20 years, right here. Please recall, China's huge infrastructure development and large stainless steel production was ramping up since 2005. It's been now almost 15 years. And in this 15 to 16 years from now, I mean, from then, the stainless that was consumed in the industry is going to start coming out. In my few slides later, you will see in China, the highest quantity of nickel units is getting consumed. And believe me, Ian, when you see that slide in that same slide, you will see that the scrap in nickel, the nickel in the scrap, I'm sorry, nickel in the scrap in China is more used as compared to nickel in India. But we will, nickel in the scrap in India. Let's go review that a little later. 
Uh, I personally don't think that the scrap will ever be allowed for exports out of China. And this will mean that there would be more stainless steel scrap available within China. That ha and it will be a cheaper unit than perhaps NPI. And it is going to substitute or replace NPI units unless there is new more, more production coming up in China. I think China will, China's uh, scrap utilization ratio will slightly go up. Uh, the one which I was referring to is this very slide earlier. The nickel units consumed. Please have a look at it. In China, the production nickel units consumed is about 1.2 million tons, of which 284,000 tons is from the scrap units. If you compare India, a total of 111,000 tons of nickel units are consumed, of which 86,000 tons is coming out of the scrap units. US, 100 from 146, 110,000 tons is used, coming out of the scrap unit. Of course, the other countries are a very simple example. From 466 in Europe, 300 is getting consumed in scrap and nickel. So let us look at now, sorry, the same crude stainless production. If one examines this slide very carefully, you will notice that China and Indonesia, all countries, all except China and Indonesia, and look at this, 2019, in Europe, from 6.6 .6 million tons to 6.1 million tons. In China, I mean, in US, it is 2.7 to 2.2. India, 3.9 to 3.1. And now, China and Indonesia are the only ones which have gone up. Their production, there is no loss. COVID or no COVID. And what one always will wonder, and history books may write, as to why China, which is where COVID-19 was originated, did not show any effects of closures or lockdowns that other countries in the world face. Indonesia again, while it is geographically differently located, different part of the world, but all stainless steel production is still Chinese owned. We all are aware that Xinjiang Holding Group is the largest. They have built an industrial park in Morowali that will produce almost 350,000 tons of nickel per annum. They also have chrome facil production facilities. And now with the production of stainless steel there, they use liquid nickel per annum. They use liquid chrome, with the, which is always iron is free, coming from both ferrochrome and nickel per annum. So what happens is anybody's guess. They have the world's cheapest production. And if I recall from my memory from the previous years, some experts have said they are cheaper in production than the cheapest of the production by $500 a ton. Who can survive this competition? Thanks to the recent Indian government's notification, there has been a 22.31% countervailing duty levied on all Indonesian imports into India. This is effective only October 9th. So it's a very recent one. Earlier, because of IFTA, the Asian Indian Free Trade Agreement, there was zero import duties. Again, because of IFTA, there cannot be any import duties levied. But can countervailing duties be levied? It's a challenge, it's a question that India may face in the World Trade Organization or be in the IFTA, but the brighter side of this could be that Xinjiang may put a metal shop in India. But if they do put it up a plant in India, it would be a level playing field because they will also require to import either stainless steel scrap or little pig iron. 
but then their cost is going to be at par with jindal or any other production in india i'd like to just go into this small uh, little uh, slide global capita per capita consumption see if you can see in 2010 we had 192 kilos consumed globally per capita in 2019 with almost a population of 7 billion people 5 kilos have gone up that 5 kilos means almost 3.5 million tons is getting consumed more than what it was consumed in 2010 i'm sure new capital new capacity is being installed in in indonesia by some more chinese company i think obsidian stainless steel a subsidiary of a hong kong based xiangu they are putting up a 3.5 million tons additional capacity coming up so i'm sure there is a boom in demand for stainless steel whether the demand will be for stainless steel scrap that time would tell and time would define if nickel pig iron is the only resource or raw material or would it be st- also stainless steel scrap i personally think stainless steel scrap is not going anywhere to conclude india china and other developing nations urbanization will definitely propel higher demand in the coming year developed nations like mostly in europe and in america the growth is going to be negative or just stagnant covid-19 who knows well it may last another few months hopefully will get over soon as soon as the vaccine is found it looks like the world will continue to go on with the new norms of life china will remain the largest producer and consumer of stainless steel and will also be a key factor to drive the nickel prices global per capita increased by 5 kilos from 2010 to 2019 china by far will be the largest producer of stainless steel and major production growth will come out of indonesia with that ladies and gentlemen thank you crio thank you and all my contributors for the information that has been collected and data collected i want to thank you once again have a great day thanks